one if DJ plays. If you have a question for DJ, please raise your hand. We'll get you the mic. Hey, DJ. How do you feel the offensive line has kind of come together as you guys have solidified on, you know, five to six guys on, on that unit? Uh, you know, definitely you can see, like, steady improvement. Uh, you know, just trying to get guys in, uh, see where guys play well, see who plays well together. So, um, you know, definitely from the first game to now, uh, you can see steady improvement. Uh, guys really gelling together. So, I mean, I feel like we're in a good spot, you know, with the, you know, the five to six guys, seven guys that can come in and play at any given moment. And with Donnell Brown, as someone who's gone against him in practice, is mm -hmm. there a moment from, you know, the fall or the summer where you were like, oh, this guy's going to be, he's going to be a problem? Yeah, I mean, uh, coming in, like, I say from even, like, summer workouts, uh, doing one-on-ones against him, uh, he was a guy that came in, uh, he pushed me, challenged me, and then in practice now, uh, every day, one-on-ones, he's the first guy I see uh, waiting to go against me, so... You know, it's definitely like wow. Like we had we had some good battles, some uh, good back and forth. So you could definitely see, you know, moments where it's like, yeah, wow, he's a, he's a really good player, really good pass rusher. You know, so. Hey DJ, uh, with Gotti, he seems like a you know kind of a quieter, softer spoken guy. Obviously, you're around him a lot much more than we are. Uh -huh. Is that true? And just kind of what's he like in practices and you know outside of football? Uh, yeah, you know, he, he's not the guy that's going to be all like your loud rah-rah guy, but, you know, he's going to, you know, do do the work that needs to be done. Uh, you know, he talks within the O-line, uh, you know, so he's a guy that's going to, you know, work, uh, make sure the work is done, and then, you know, have his conversation. He's going to ask questions. Uh, you know, he asks me daily about little things that he can do to get better. You know, we talk back and forth about, like, techniques that we're learning and whatnot, so... Uh, he's definitely he's not the guy that's going to be your loud you know rah rah guy, but he's going to come in work get the work done, uh, ask what needs to be asked so he can get his job done effectively. DJ, you, you've had a couple times during games um, where where an offensive lineman has gone down. You've had to make in game substitutions. Um, as the guy who's been a part of this system for the longest among that group, how do your responsibilities change when that happens? Uh, just trying to make sure that, you know, whoever comes in, I mean, we know that whoever comes in is going to be ready to go. Uh, they know what to do. So just trying to, you know, keep them up like, hey, you know, you got this. Uh, you know, you've done it before. Uh, make sure everybody comes in and jails uh, together. You know, if a guy goes down, we like, to, we like to say we have guys, you know, that are ready to step up and ready to go. So uh, I don't feel like it's much really that I need to do because guys know what, what has to happen. But uh, just trying to make sure, you know, they're in the right headspace to come out there and just, you know, pick up where the other guy may have left off. DJ, for the past three or four years, you guys have had a habit of making strong starts and then not following that up towards you as you guys finish. How do you make sure you avoid that this time around? Uh, just, just make sure we keep up our intensity with practice. You know, it starts with practices. Um, we, we we have to make sure that we pay attention to the details uh, to be ready to go out each, each week and play, you know, to the best of our abilities. Uh, we like to say, you know, that this group is maybe a little different from the past groups. You know, everybody's willing to come in and not worry about what happened previously. So just trying to, uh, you know, make sure everybody's still on the same page as far as, you know, we're going to come out. We have a job to do each week. Uh, each day we're trying to get better so we can go – Saturday and you know get get the get the job done so uh, just emphasizing you know starting strong in games and then finishing stronger and then everything will come together DJ what was the biggest focus for you guys going into the bye week maybe from on, on a unit level uh, just getting back to the fundamentals uh, that's pretty much where everything starts uh, fundamentally you have to be sound to make sure that everybody gets their job done um, Everybody's working as one as a unit, so pretty much we started everything, everything over. The coaches like you know retaught re stuff as simple as footwork uh, to make sure that everybody was on the same page. Everybody, you know, was in the right spots. Everybody had the right techniques. So just trying to make sure everybody you know gets back to the back to the basics and not trying to overcomplicate things. Northwestern doesn't jump off the page.
stage defensively as a dangerous team, but then again, neither did Illinois. Uh, what is it about this Wildcats team that concerns you guys offensively, I guess, and specifically Bryce Gallagher? Yeah, uh, you know, we know they're going to come out and play, you know, sound defense. Uh, you know, nobody is, especially in the Big Ten, we know Northwestern, they're not just going to let us go out there and execute, you know, do what we want to do. So, uh, you know, it comes down to us going out there and making sure that we're in the right spots, we're in the right positions. Uh, you know, we know each week we go out there, you can't take anyone lightly. Uh, there's guys, you know, on the other side of the ball that, that want to make plays. They want to win as well, just as bad as we do. So just trying to make sure that we can be the team that executes better. Uh, and that goes back to the bye week, you know, starting over with the basics and um, make sure, you know, everybody's on the same page. Everybody comes out, you know, with that hunger. Uh, everybody wants to get back on track together. Hey, DJ. Um, with Jayshon Barham, what makes him so difficult to deal with as a, pa as a pass rusher coming from Washington Europe? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a guy that's, you know, very, like, slippery. I mean, going against him in practice, you, it's like a moment you think you have your hands on him, and then next thing you know, he's behind you. It's like, how did he do that? Uh, you know, he's just he's, – he's very slip, slippery. He can, you know, play the mic, then he can come down on the line and rush the passer. So, you know, just from, you know, going against him in practice, I can say it's moments where I think I got him blocked, and then next thing you know, I'm looking at him like, wow, he's, he, I don't know how he did that. So, with, Obviously with him being moving between positions, is there any difference with him as a pass rusher like – that makes him different from guys who do just that full time. Is there something a difference in the skill? Uh, I mean, we we've seen him, you know, go out affect uh, receivers trying to make catches. And then he can come on the line. He can come on the line dropping coverage, you know. So I mean, you never really know what you're going to get with him. So I mean, I would say that's something that really makes him, you know, difficult to, you know, I guess block and game plan for is. You never really know what you're going to get. Uh, he can drop in coverage. He can rush the passer. He can fit the run. So it's, it's a lot that he can do. Anyone else? Thanks, DJ. Thank you.